Excessive heat warning in effect until 8 p.m. Right now, 95 degrees officially in New York City with a heat index of 103. My name is Sarah Tabor. I'm paralyzed, um, in, uh, incomplete paraplegia at about L4. You go out there and you don't feel disabled at all. All you do is just carve and move and the surfboard just kind of relates to you in a way. I'm the founding president of the Testability Fund for Spinal Cord Injury and one of the events that we do is the Wheels to Water. It's the great equalizer because they're in the water, they're just floating, they're like everybody else, they don't need their feet, they just, um, they feel alive again, as you can see. I had my injury 14 years ago. I broke my neck um, doing competitive cheerleading. It's really cool that there's activities like this. It brings more awareness to other people who may not have known about spinal cord injuries. I think the message is getting out there and you know people like you guys coming out and helping out too it definitely spreads it a long way and people start coming out from here and there. Next thing you know you got 20, 30, 40 people that want to go and it's great. It shows them that anything is possible and if you can dream it you can do it. Whether or not you're disabled or you have you know, stuff going on in your life, if you don't reserve time to just have a riot, have, totally forget about things, then it's just, life is just gonna suck you dry. That's the main point of the day. Make a lot of people happy, and uh, not just the surfers, the volunteers too. It's all inspiring. Like, I just see people who want to not be limited by being in a wheelchair and their injuries. They have so much power and they have so much enthusiasm. It's awesome. There's people out there, you know, that can't, can't walk like me, but they're still living life and enjoying life. That's a great thing to see firsthand. Yeah, I never surfed. They did something I never did. It's the ride out, you know, when you're paddling and paddling paddling <laughs> when you actually sit there and think holy crap I am so lucky to be alive and be able to experience this stuff. So I see my son back you know smiling to see all these guys back smiling again and um, knowing that we had a lot to do with it just means a lot to me it's just a good feeling for everybody down here today. I love singing. I've always sang, and I can't go a day without singing. It's just something that you do. When I sing with, with these people specifically, like it's lot, I'm a lot more comfortable. It's, it's just like something special. We're considered one of the best choirs that Glen Cove has seen, and you know it's, it's a great honor to leave a legacy like that in Glen Cove. One, two, six. When these kids came and auditioned for me um, back in, in June, I really knew we had something special. Once I started to hear the kids in auditions and you know, get that sound in my head, um, it was just a matter of saying, all right, what are we going to do that's going to knock the socks off of this thing? I applied to the social office of the White House, I had to write an essay about the choir, I sent recordings and I sent pictures and recordings and pictures and um, you know, I, thankfully they were impressed enough to uh, send us a formal invitation. I mean, this group is my second family and we've grown together and, and to be able to tell them, hey guys, guess what, we're going to the White House was one of the top moments I've had in my career. I'm thinking like, oh, we're just a little Long, uh, Long Island choir, but I never realized the talent that we had compared to the, you know, the talent out there. We're going to the White House. We're going to perform in the White House. It's beyond an honor. It's not something that you know, just falls in your lap, and yet here we are singing for them. I mean, it took a lot of hard work, and we, I think we deserve it. And I think that we should feel good, and we should give our best show. Global War on Terrorism, Wall of Remembrance, pays tribute and homage to those individuals 
that have lost their life during the global acts of terrorism that have taken place. It's a perpetual wall, so we actually add names as the Department of Defense releases names killed in combat. Since we updated the panel, these are the individuals that were lost uh, in our military in action. So our current total on the wall is 10,885 fallen heroes, and it's been five days since the last killed in action. This is the inaugural tour of this wall. Um, I built it two years ago, uh, and when I decided to take it out on tour, I said, no matter what, I don't care what we have to do, or how many people attend or anything, I wanna make sure that this wall is set up in New York for the week of 9-11. It was important to us to be able to show it in depiction of pictures along with text. And kids need to be able to see what's going on because as far as some people know, it, it, they just think that it's a couple towers that fell down. It is for us to tell the little ones, you know, what happened in a more practical way. We tell them in the classrooms, but this wall is a profound way of, of, of submitting the information to them. I felt it, it was appropriate that we needed to put the names together of those individuals lost on 9-11 and those individuals that answered the call of action. It's very emotional and you can't believe it. So many, so many thousands of names. These names travel with me. These are people. And, and I take our heroes, victims, and uh, first responders, I take them everywhere, all over the country. These, these, are, these are the people I'm responsible for, and I've got to bring them home. You tell them we're proud of him and thank you. Okay, so, thanks. Every day I wake up, every day I'm humbled. Every day I get a chance to meet a Gold Star family, a mom that's grieving, or a dad. Um, I get a chance to meet some of the first responder families. I have pride in the fact of the American spirit. I have pride in the fact that everybody bands together and when everybody comes and sees this wall, I have pride in knowing that there's individuals out there that care, that don't want to forget. It's not over. We haven't seen the end yet. And that's frightening for our children and our grandchildren. If I don't have to add another name to this, I would be, I, it, would, it would be a blessing from above. Unfortunately, it's going to happen. Hi, my name is Pat. I've lived in Freeport here on the water for about 15 years now. The morning of Sandy, it, it was like a war zone back here. It was terrible. The water was this high. It was actually up to the, the water was right up to here, back here. And uh, <coughs> actually my wife slept with a life jacket on. <laughs> Quite a difference a year makes. We got Hammond, but I, apparently we found tomato seeds here. <laughs> we first noticed what looked like weeds, and they just kept getting bigger. I said, oh, these these weeds are funny looking. It was actually lettuce. And then probably about a month later is when we saw other things starting to grow. Don't ask me how, but it just appeared here. <clears throat> We're assuming it came in from the hurricane surge. It deposited tomatoes here. I got them over there. I got them everywhere. I feel like Mr. Bunch of Galoop. We watered them a little, but uh, they're producing well. <laughs> I've never ever had a green thumb and neither has my husband. This, this is the easiest way of planting tomatoes. Just walk out the door, they appear. That's wacky. <laughs> the scrowing had of a crack. I moved the table over so it had something to lean on, actually. They just keep growing and growing, and I don't take care of them. They just keep turning red. They're delicious, and we've been making sauce. I'm gonna make lasagna with this batch. <laughs> Maybe for Thanksgiving. They do make good sauce. If I have to say so myself. I'm hoping that they uh, grow back next year. We're just amazed and we're wondering why nobody else around us got as lucky as we did, I guess. <laughs> My mother said that it was a gift from God, so I guess God likes tomatoes.